Greetings, Senate of Scotland from Western Jerusalem. Let us hear the word of the Lord from Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in Israel. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, as my London Marathon shoes that I'm wearing shake the dust of what the ancient Hebrews called Zion, I'm struck at the poignancy of this psalm of ascent, a song that the pilgrims sung as they made their trek to Jerusalem for the high festivals. It is obvious, even then, that people face dangers reaching this sacred spot on which we and other URC pilgrims have been walking. The text is clear though. There is no distinction between chosen people and no good people, but between those who trust in God and those who seek to do fellow pilgrims harm. As our EasyJet flight reached Tel Aviv on Wednesday, I was struck at how calm the Mediterranean Sea looks from 20,000 feet in the air. The peace there is a stark contrast to what I might find on land, I thought. As we entered Jerusalem, the words of another psalm of ascent, Psalm 122, rushed through my mind. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. As the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Passing pristine, well-paved, modern Jerusalem, we enter a checkpoint to enter Bethlehem, just 10 kilometers south. Silence filled the bus as we saw segregation personified. Maybe it was the tiredness from the long flight, but the difference between the two cities is obvious. Rubbish compacted, it seems, in every corner in Bethlehem. Unfinished buildings which tell the story of government restrictions and years of violence inflicted on the community. Chaotic driving, constant honks of the horns, and near accidents, the result of few street lights or signs in Bethlehem. Certainly not as many street lights as you see in Israeli territory. In the evening, the sound of the call to Islamic prayer reminds me that I'm not in Kansas anymore. Even here, Palestinians speak of the difficulties visiting families, celebrating feast days, tending to emergencies due to restrictions placed upon them. Not even the Palestinian government can protect the people from being treated like second-class citizens in their own land. Yet, their own theological understanding of their land is not that they are a chosen people for this land, but that God is the owner of the land. The parallels between here and race relations in South Africa and the United States are very evident to all of us. As with my country and others, what is necessary is a revolution of what a fr friend of ours, Nidal, a leader of the Olive Tree Project here in, here in Israel, here in Palestine, calls 
what he calls people moved by beautiful values. He said, for once we start speaking only politics and interests, there is no hope. Now we're in Jerusalem, earlier today on the Mount of Olives, as we heard a cacophony of human sounds of Lawrence Moore teaching over pilgrims from other nations singing and speaking the Lord's Prayer. From the distance, the call to Muslim afternoon prayer from the north, south, east, and west, it seemed, and birds chirping around the olive trees. It's an extraordinary experience. Not even a wall can partition us from God's presence. As the psalmist wrote, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Let us pray. Living God, you are indeed living amongst us in the messiness of our circumstances. You walk with us, turn us from pilgrims to children. May we have the good sense to follow your way of peace. May we never forget the circumstances of the most vulnerable. And may our understanding of who you are never be complicit in the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Palestine and wherever segregation and indifference reign. But Lord, lead us to sympathy, solidarity, and action. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings to you all.